Hey yo, my Planet Coaster friends, Johnny5Live here. We're back with another episode of Coaster Spotlight. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at Revenge of the Kraken, created by Stormrider Ash. So stay tuned and let's check it out. Alright, this was sent in by one of our Discord members and gold patrons, Stormrider Ash. Thank you so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. And he says, a small placeable coaster blueprint that I was working on. The theme of this ride is that a pirate versus navy, as you can see in the walk into the scenery, pirate are going at it against the navy as an unexpected monstrosity lures closer. They must band together to overcome the beast of the depths, which it all unfold as you zoom and fly around the action on a ride involving sudden drops, twists, turns, and high-speed turns. Quick look at the Steam Workshop, everybody. Here it is, Revenge of the Kraken by Stormrider Ash. Links will be down in the description as always. Come rate it, favorite it, subscribe to it, and all that good stuff. All right, so I do want to mention that you guys will probably see a lot of Patreon videos this week. There's a lot of uh, a lot of our patrons making submissions all at the same time, just so happens, and I do honor the priority pass. And I do say if you're a silver patron or higher, you get a priority priority pass onto the show and since we only have 32 patrons at this moment essentially if you're a patron you you do get prioritized and i do pick it as long as your submission is good it just so happens that all of our patrons end up they, they all happen to be really good creators but i am honoring the system uh, even more so than i promised so um, as long as the creation is actually good i just have to say that essentially the patrons are the ones making the show go on if it weren't for the patrons there would be no show and youtube doesn't doesn't pay very much money guys and a third of my monthly revenue is now supported by the patrons so they're making this all possible so I want to try and honor everybody as much as possible no matter what their patron rank is however if you're gold or higher or silver or higher you're gonna get on the show more frequently and that's just the way it goes low-end patron I'll still consider it because you are helping the channel I'm, I'm definitely gonna prioritize the higher patrons always so essentially if you're silver or gold right now as long as your submission is good you're gonna get on the show almost the, that week the week of submission so i definitely encourage everybody to do that and uh, you know you guys help make the show possible so thank you to all this, the patrons let's uh take a look at what this is all about it's revenge of the kraken we saw something similar by riddler revenge this month and um <laughs> i feel like they had the same name or something so there's a lot of krakens going on here oh you know what i forgot to do Now, I have been, in the last few episodes here and there, depending on how I release these, you guys will see me, if it's a placeable coaster blueprint, I'll include the the building, or the setup, in the intros. So, um, let me know what you guys think of that, if you guys want to see how the paths are set up, and if that's, it's, I, I mean, it's better than just sitting here looking at nothing, I, I figured. Um, it's a little bit more editing work, but that's okay. As long as it improves the quality of the show, I will, I'd like to try and find all these little things to do here and there. Taking a quick look at this, let's lock the time of day to daytime. Now, all right. Nice use of pirate ships uh, crash into rocks here. And lots of krakens and water going on here. Quite crazy. Uh, I'll probably actually slow this down. It's a little bit crazy with all these arms flailing about. Uh, I love this boarding station. It's like the hull of a ship, and they're fighting on it. Really neat. Now, my initial reaction when I was putting this down is when I saw the screenshots, it looked like there was a lot more elevation and depth to it. It does feel a little bit flat. However, if you're putting it on your cove or up against some mountains and stuff, I think it could look quite good. Uh, let's see how many pieces this is. 1995. So a lot of the rocks chewing up the part count. Now, if I were to make a suggestion, I would probably say make the entrance more apparent. I know you ran out of pieces. It's kind of tough. Uh, maybe you can fix this or go back to this and improve it a little bit when the 4,000 piece blueprint comes out. Now. You could probably go a little bit lighter on some of the rocks in some areas and just leave it as open pools 
and that would give you extra pieces but when i was placing this down i couldn't really uh, you probably saw in the intro spinning it and spinning it and spinning it and i couldn't quite tell where the entrance was and then when i started connecting the paths i realized it was this right here and uh, i usually really appreciate it when people do some sort of uh entrance so some sort of building here whether it be a pirate hall or you know a big caribbean pirate entrance of some sort with some decorations and maybe a shop next to it that would be a lot more welcoming and you know a big sign saying revenge of the kraken just to kind of let you know i mean all rides have some sort of in real life all coaster experiences have some sort of ride letting you know hey this is the coaster you're going on and i feel like that's lacking in this one and I'm also feeling it's lacking a little bit of elevation. Um, so when the 4,000 piece blueprint update comes, I would definitely recommend trying to add in some more caves or hills or mountains with these rock formations. Um, a little bit more palm trees and, and stuff like that. And I don't really know the pirate pieces all too well. I'd have to look at them. But it's definitely could use a little bit more umph. So you're gonna have to get creative with that on your own. Now there's lots of Krakens and lots of fun animatronics going on here. So we're gonna have to judge the rest as we ride it. So the guests are pouring on. And I did like the queue, so we'll, we'll take a walk through the queue here. Um, it is quite nice. You pass through all these neat rocks and it's, it's very immersive. See, I like this coming over us. Now if that was integrated into the coaster where you're going underneath rock formations and stuff, um, that would be really cool as well. And they pass by a Kraken for the queue. Oh, some floating barrels there. And boom, into the boarding station. Alright, let's take a look at the nighttime lighting. I really like how it's glowing over here. That looks real nice. Um, now... I don't know if it's actually purple or if that's the moonlight, but I feel like uh, to make it feel kind of creepy, you could have more purple lights on top. Uh, blue, purple, orange. Ver that would be a very nice combo of lights. And I would try and push that a little bit further in some er areas. Um, use the floodlight and di direct it from maybe up top so it pushes on top. And then the blue projects underneath. And then uh, little uh, add in more lanterns. I put some more lanterns around here. And again, you did run out of pieces, so I get that. So this is really feedback for next month. You could take this feedback, come back to it in the next update, and really make this thing hit home. But I think you got the right idea here. And for me, it's just feeling a little bit flat. And it's lacking a little bit of nighttime lighting and a boarding entrance. Other than that... Uh, I think those those fixes will make it a really awesome coaster. And in terms of your track color, uh, I don't know what the reason for yellow, or I guess it's like a yellow-orange, tertiary orange. I don't know what the, the reason for that is. Let's see what... Orange, blue, they are complementary colors, but there's a lot of brown. I guess it works. Orange and green... I just feel because it's a Kraken coaster, I'm thinking maybe a purple would have worked better. For the supports, I'm not sure. I mean, you could do brown. I mean, green actually works. You could just change the track to purple. I think that might look better, to be honest. The, the orange is very vibrant and stands out, and it's very playful. Whereas I feel like this should be a little bit more spooky feeling or terrifying. Uh, orange is such a playful color, so... That's my thoughts, everybody. Let's get on the coaster. So, quick look at the stats. A 5.39 excitement, uh, a 3.44 fear, and a 1.89 nausea. You could also put a custom uh, Planet Coaster soundtrack attached to the coaster. Not a big deal. I think what we'll do is we'll ride it at day and then night, and which whenever, whichever one I think is better, we'll do a cinematic for. Can use a little smoothing there.
All right, so I do have some feedback on the coaster, but uh, before I give that, I want to ride it at night. Definitely feel like this has a lot of nighttime potential. With the feedback I gave earlier. Now, for the, in terms of animatronics, I feel like they're... I don't know if I missed it or if I was just sitting there thinking about the coaster and my feedback. Or if... Uh, I feel like it's it's lacking from that coming straight down into a crack and scare moment. Like a very obvious one. I, I gotta check this out again for cinematic. Yeah, if you time the Kraken just right, you can actually get the coaster to go right through its mouth and scare you. Um, I feel like he's kind of off to the side in all three different uses rather than in your face. So definitely could use a little bit of improving there. Um, now, I wanted to mention something for nighttime. I noticed that you lit it with blue lights. Uh, a, probably a better way of doing this, although it would take more pieces... This is just a little bit of feedback because the, the, the lights are pretty spotty. Um, well, there's two, two ways of doing it. Rather than using five different spotlights and then making it look all spotty, uh, option one is to go into here and use the floodlight rather than the actual spotlight. And then you can hide it in one of your rocks and color it blue, depending on the blue. And depending on how far you put it out or where you hide it, um, you could get... You can cover the whole area with just one light, pretty much, or maybe two, one on either end. That works a little bit better. It's less spotty. Um, and then there's option two, which is if you go into editable text, uh, any of these signs will work. Uh, I, I recommend using the biggest one. I haven't quite figured out which one's the biggest. I've seen people use these ones. What you can do with these is they naturally glow. So if you want that glowy water, this is probably a better option and you could still use some spotlights um, and different bits of lights to kind of get a little bit more texture but use like a darker blue so it's a little bit darker in some areas you could still use a spotlight to make it project color I get it's I get that it's not an, a realistic water effect but it does give off some pretty neat I don't, I don't know I like the glowing water personally um, 
I'd still say you could do stuff like this and add it on top just to give it a little bit of extra um, noise but I would take those and reduce the brightness so if you if you take it down it'll just make it less bright um, but then you could also do the floodlight thing that I showed earlier there's a number of different options so I just want to show you that guys that and then your coaster itself could definitely use a lot of work in the smoothing department so I, I didn't really get the whole coming out with drive wheels for so long it's definitely gonna lower your excitement rating I would consider th rethinking how like you want to lift your coaster and how you want to design your coaster because there's no reason it couldn't have just come out straight into the lift up this way it didn't need to go all the way around it could have just turned and gone up um, all you would have to do is it would just yeah you just push the the whole you would just shift the whole thing up a little bit so the lift would be here and then it kind of came out and gone straight up the lift. Um, so definitely think about your design a little bit to try and avoid long drive wheels out of a coaster. And then um, your smoothing tool is your best friend in this game. So you can definitely smooth these transitions a little bit more, especially coming out through here and down. You can even smooth that whole thing. And there's a lot of little spots on this coaster that could use some love from that. Um, like these hard kinks. That's a, that's a big no-no for me. It needs to be a little bit smoother. You don't want to give people whiplash. Now obviously your rocks are going to get in your way. You could fix it by doing that. And if you still want to maintain the banking. Um, what I do when I'm doing this. Is I take the piece. I overbank it. And then I smooth the piece going into it. Still a little bit harsh but <laughs> you get it you can still smooth it and pull it out a little bit more there you go perfect um, maybe this part could use a little bit more there you go and then this part as well it's kind of like kinked so definitely pay attention to every inch of your track as you're riding it um, usually what I do is when I ride my coaster I kind of like well, first I'll just go through and look at every piece of the track as I'm going through and make sure that there's no kinks like that. Anyways, you get it. There's a lot of spots on this coaster that I felt could use that. Overall, the design's pretty good. I just, uh, well... I would rethink how you do some of the design, to be honest. It's just the layout is a little bit strange in terms of how it comes up and out. And I would probably go straight into the drop instead of coming out so high and all that stuff. So in my opinion, I would have I would have probably... Now, one thing I felt with this coaster is it wasn't very fast. So I would have even probably raise that lift a bit higher just a little bit now when you're trying to connect these things sometimes like when you when you fudge things and move things around like you guys saw it when I did it over here I just fudged it I pulled it up and it broke all the track and created all these dents you can always always f uh, fix all that stuff by smoothing so even here I'm just trying to like get it to where it needs to be over there and I really don't care what it looks like as long as I get it there so as soon as it lets me snap it in okay got a little bit of a problem here that's all right we can go under and now it, it, it's completely lumpy and terrible but if we just grab it all the way to the top and oh Okay, we probably have conflicting with this track here. Temporarily move this. It's going to be coming down straight from the drop into this roll. Probably going to make it a little bit more exciting. And now we just got to kind of fix this transition 
And then it kinked over here, which can easily be fixed. Mm. Now, one thing with these pre-made pieces that I would watch out for is you want to always leave yourself track in between pre-made pieces because you cannot smooth them together. So you, you want to be able to have a little distance between uh, those preset pre pieces. And in some cases, I like to make these barrel rolls and loops myself. I just bend the track the way I want it, and it gives you a lot more control and freedom, uh, especially when it comes to refining your coaster in the long run. I didn't smooth all the spots. However, I did increase the chain lift height, the first initial drop. I would also say this needs to be banked. But I was just giving you a general idea of how I would go about ch making some changes on this. You would have to really spend the time to get it just right. But I got the right idea going, I think, with this. So I'm curious to know if the ride stats are a little bit better. The coaster would be a little bit faster. All right, let's test this initial first drop and speed. See, I like this going straight into the big drop. It's a lot smoother than like riding around up so high for so long. We do have a little bit more speed now. Can still use some smoothing. Definitely needs smoothing there. So as you're riding this, like you have to do a quality assurance pass. Like I see little bits of smoothing everywhere now that I need that needs to be done that could be part uh, banking harder around that corner that was a little bit better and this parts a little bit smoother now and going into the station should be a little, little bit smoother now I, I felt like our biggest culprits were coming in after this drop um, that whole transition could be a lot nicer. Now I am curious to see the stats. Look at that. We got this to almost a seven excitement already. You, your excitement was at a five, I believe. So we got it up an entire two points from those changes. I would probably, uh, it needs a lot of adjustments. In order to get that smooth, we need to bring this up. Oh, it's all intertwined and messy. We're not going to be able to do that. Anyways, it would take some fiddling and some reworking. Uh, essentially, you would have to either come down underneath the track and up and around. It, I like this intertwining mix. It has potential, but it needs to be smoother. It, it certainly does. So there were big culprits here and coming down into here. So I would say... It wouldn't hurt to delete it and rethink it and get it really smooth. But I think you have the right idea. Anyways, that's a long episode. A lot of feedback in this one. I think it was all viable feedback. Really curious to see what this becomes with a 4K blueprint because I do think it has potential. There's a lot of good elements here. It could become something really nice. But I overall, I really enjoyed it and I think it has promise. All right, everybody. That's uh, Revenge of the Kraken by Stormrider Ash. Links will be in the, down in the description as always. That's going to do it for this episode of Coaster Spotlight. If you guys enjoyed, please be sure to smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more Daily Planet Coaster videos and let me know what you guys thought of the Revenge of the Kraken down in the comments below. All right, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye now.